In 2007, a couple of New Yorkers decided to give up life in the city for life on the farm. But just like other small-scale farmers, they found that competing with the big producers was nearly impossible. We've been farmers now for six years, and you know we knew nothing about farming when we started. It's always been a matter of problem solving. Uh, so for us, we were really looking at um, the problem of small farms and how they can have a sustainable existence uh, and grow their businesses to a degree where they can afford to feed their families and send their kids to college. They wanted to add tomatoes to the farm's existing goat herd and market pasta sauce. The problem? how to compete with the big guys growing millions of pounds of tomatoes on thousands of acres in California. The solution, don't compete, combine. Our big challenge was to find enough tomatoes to create a sauce that could be sold on the mass market that would include heirloom tomatoes from small farms, but also be uh, uh, at a price point that we could get it into large major mass retailers and the consumer could afford it. So we had to turn to traditional agriculture to uh, sort of backfill in uh, what we couldn't grow from small farms. Farms like this one in California, where virtually all of the processed tomatoes are grown. Kilmer Purcell and Ridge turned to an heirloom tomato variety created in 1929 to help farmers get out of the Great Depression. They also borrowed the name for their new sauce, the Mortgage Lifter. Along with a neighbor, they grow a few thousand pounds a year, and that's where Big Ag comes in. Those few thousand pounds grown in New York, not nearly enough to satisfy a nationwide retailer, join hundreds of thousands of pounds more grown in California, creating a new way to market small production agriculture. We just think that there's room for everybody to play in the marketplace uh, so that the consumer has uh, as many choices as possible. And 25% of the profits go right back to small farmers across the nation. Prices have actually been down a bit for fresh produce in California over the past week, but that may change as much of the nation settles into a deep freeze. Flats of 12 six-ounce cups of red raspberries from the Salinas-Watsonville area are selling for $10 to $12. That's down $2 from the week before. Prices are also down on the year. Movement is expected to remain constant. Apple pears in two different sizes are generally unchanged this week. Haswe apple pears are the most common variety. Two-layer cartons of 36s from the San Joaquin Valley are selling for $19 to $21. No change over the past week. And two-layer cartons of 48s, also from the San Joaquin Valley, are selling for $16 to $17, about the same as a week ago. Also referred to as Asian pears, they are called apple pears because of their crisp, apple-like consistency. Trading has been moderate on both sizes. I'm Richard Gearhart reporting.